Carla Ortiz, some people may not know you, and some people may know you. For those that don't know you, can you please just give us a quick glimpse about your life, what it is you did before the conflict, and what it is you do now? For Syria. For Syria and the outside world, for those that don't know you. <laughs> well, um, you know, I started as an actress, and I've been uh, working in uh, Los Angeles, in Hollywood, in Latin America, in Europe for many, many years. And I decided to start uh, producing in order to create my own content. Uh, because obviously in, um, in the United States, you know, today, nowadays, uh, Latinas are sort of like, um, like this sexy kind of thing going on. And sometimes, you know, the characters are limited to uh, characters that are just very bubbly. And it's fun because it goes a lot with our personality, but nevertheless, it's really important also for you as an actress for your career um, to be able to focus on characters that are maybe a little bit not I'm not gonna say more serious but that just has a little bit more content so this is the reason why I started producing and I produced this um, very important film about the um, dictatorships in Latin America and this is how I got into um, being kind of behind the scenes and in front of, uh, of the camera and um, I decided to make a documentary in Sir uh, about Syria. So I came here in the beginning of uh, 2016. Uh, to tell you the truth, I had no idea um, what I was going to do. I knew I wanted to maybe make a documentary. It was not my choice to come to Syria. It really, um, today I understand that Mother Syria came into my dreams and asked me, I'm your grandmother, uh, you come from me, you need to go back home and uh, understand where you come from. Uh, so I came here and I thought might be, might be something for a, a 10 day, 30 day trip and that turned into three years. I've been coming back to the country and I've been sharing and basically living with the people um, from all sides, from all uh, different, um, I can say social classes, levels of education, um, a religion, I don't know, I can, all sex, with all of them, I've been on the streets. And um, this is my first documentary as a filmmaker, as a director. Uh, but I believe this also positioned me somehow as a sort of an activist. I don't like to call myself an activist because what I do, I do it with my heart. I do it with all of my soul. Um, I'm a wimp. I cry all the time. And um, because I, I feel the people, I feel the love, I feel the pride, I feel um, the, the gratitude that they have and the love they give me. So yeah, I'm very emotional. So I decided to use my social media and the position that I can have as a celebrity um, internationally in my country, whatever I am, um, for uh, the causes like Syria. So yeah, my life has been dedicated uh, to this wonderful country that in reality, it is um, the uh, seed of humanity. So I understand that me as a Bolivian, mm. born a American citizen a, and Syrian sole national, mm. <laughs> a, it is my duty uh, to stand here. And I can't stand mm. uh, for too long mm. uh, away from Syria mm. because I miss it. So. The, the answer would be super long, but in short, that's what it is. As a foreigner from the U.S., how do you feel Syria is? Is it an expensive country or an unexpensive country? Uh, well, it depends from what point of view you see it, right? Because when you have crisis in a country or you have war in a country, uh, and there are sanctions against this country, unfortunately, um, it will be always expensive for the people that are living in Syria. Mm -hmm or in Yemen, or in Venezuela, or even in Bolivia, in one point we had these, these problems as well. Uh, but for the foreigners, of course, it's extremely um, inexpensive. Um, I remember on my first trip, I wanted this beautiful um, long sweater that was made of uh, camel hair. And um, it, was, it was needed by hand. And I know that probably the price of these, it will be at least $300 anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world. This is the price of a handmade product. And I, I remember that the lady, um, we were talking about this and it says $30, right? And I said, no, I want to know 
what this was worth before the war. Like, what is the price? How much it cost you to make this? And she told me $100. So I paid her $100. And this is what the world doesn't know, that uh, the sanctions and, and the war and conflict, it only brings uh, more difficulty to the people, the regular people. And uh, tourism uh, in this country, Jesus Christ, mm. you know. I'm a Christian, I can say that. <laughs> But I'm also Buddhist, mm. <laughs> and, uh, and a little part of me now today, after being Syrian, is Muslim. Uh, it's just uh, incredible, uh, the beauty. You know, you want to buy everything. I mean, you know, this chair that I'm sitting, it's one of my dreams to have, you know, a full set of living room in my house. And um, I know, like, the sets are at least from before $10,000. I mean at least the, the amount of work you put in it, it will never compare. And even this has been hurt by the war. Like when you want to go back into where we come from, uh, as uh, the, from the human existence, right? Where uh, I've learned to speak and I've learned to communicate my ideas and my poetry uh, through writing. What do we use? The alphabet that was given by Syrians, uh, the musical note coming from here. Um, the first ever written song was here. The largest, more important library was, it's still here in Syria. The first, one of the first queens, you know, in history uh, in Palmyra. And um, all this, you know, is so inexpensive and for tourists to see, but at the same time, so expensive for the country to maintain. How do you feel, you know, when, when, you, when you talk to Syrians, when you see Syrians, you obviously have seen Syrians from all walks of life, all around Syria. You know, this is probably the most overwhelming question, uh, because I've never seen um, human beings like this. Uh, you know, I, I was in the house of a man that his house was just burned down and he lost all his family there. And when he's telling me his story, I'm crying. We're going to rise like the phoenix. We're going to be okay. And you're going to come back and you're going to dine in this house. And I dined in his house without his family. Uh, he rebuilt it. And that's what every Syrian is doing. Safety-wise, how have you felt? Obviously, it's changed a lot from 2016 until today. But as a woman like yourself, you've been around Syria, lots of parts of Syria. How have you felt? Have you felt uncomfortable in any kind of way going around or even in Damascus or Aleppo? Have you felt uncomfortable or unsafe? You know what? I'm going to tell you something. I know you as a Syrian want me to say that it's safer. But I'll tell you something. I've never felt unsafe in Syria. So... I, I can't say, of course, it's safer for the peace of the people. Back and forth to Syria for three mm -hmm. years. So you all, you've obviously tried a lot of the food, the Syrian food. Uh, <laughs> tell me, give me your opinion about it, the Syrian food. The Syrian food, mm. wow. I love Fatouche. I love Kabe. I love the shawarma. I love, look, the Aleppian food, mm. I love it as well. It is just so incredible. The, the extent of the, of, of the style of cuisine that you have, that, uh, yeah, every time I leave Syria, I always sleep with like two or three kilos, even though I'm on the go, I'm sleeping two hours, because, you know, I, I'm not only doing uh, my film, my documentary, but I'm doing live videos, and I'm doing sometimes pieces from some new casters. When you go back to the U.S., uh, do you advise your friends and your family to come visit Syria? Of course, and all the you, time. See... Uh, I don't even have to advise them. Uh, the people that follow me and my friends that have been seeing how gorgeous Syria is, they want to come. They're just waiting for the right moment. You know, my family, everybody wants to come. I, I mean, there is a group of people, uh, of my followers in, um, in my social media that are preparing a, a trip to come to Syria. I have told them, get together, organize yourselves, and we're going to make it happen. And uh, can you imagine that maybe in six months we can make a group of 50 or 100 people to come at once into Syria so they can walk and see the beauty of uh, 
<laughs> of the things that I've seen with my eyes and I've touched, you know, for them to really see this, it's going to be, how can you stop a hundred voices speaking exactly the same thing at once? You know, you can't stop that. Uh, it's the truth. Syria is extremely beautiful. It's a... Uh, it's a disgrace what's been happening uh, with the war and, you know, us as human beings letting uh, the destruction of uh, our own heritage. Like I always say, you know, I apologize to you as a Syrian, but Syria doesn't belong to you, Syrians. Okay. Syrian belongs to the world. It belongs to our heritage. It belongs to our memory as uh, the existence of what humanity can do through civilizations. One last thing. Can, can you tell look at the camera and tell our viewers something about Syria to the Syrian people, especially to the Syrian people, um, something from you to them. <laughs> Keep it, Surya. Surya, it's crazy. Crazy, crazy beautiful. I am uh, so proud of you. And uh, I have no words because I've been trying to really not cry today and yesterday, and I'm, I never succeed uh, for this. But um, I just want to tell you that you have defeated hate and you have defeated separation. So to all Syrians, that I have friends from all sides, come back to your country, the ones that are here. Love your country. Keep on doing what you are doing because it's magic. And I know history one day will write about this little nation that fought the whole world and defeated them with love, compassion, dignity. So keep on going and very soon I'm going to have my house in Syria and we are going uh, to dance and celebrate the amazing peace Together. that you deserve. Thank you once again. Thank you very much for your time. I know you have a you, you have a busy schedule, so seriously, thank you for taking a little time and giving it to us, uh, so we were able to do this interview with you. And we hope once again, we hope you have a safe trip back to the U.S. And we see you very soon back in Syria. It's going to happen, inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.